What's up guys, welcome back to Barf Life Report. Today we are going to be testing out some new equipment. This time it is the Elevated Craft Cobbler Shaker that Marius picked up. We bought it on Indiegogo with our own money, so this is not a sponsored video of any kind. Uh, we paid for this and we're gonna be giving some impressions about it. But what I thought would be kind of fun to do would be to do just a, a brief or as brief as I can be, because we know that I can talk quite a bit when I get going. But like a, a, as brief as I can be kind of little history on, you know, kind of shaker design and then sort of uh, how shakers have improved over the years. So the cobbler shaker dates back to the middle of the 1800s, uh, 1884 actually to be exact. And before that, there were two different, Mary's just telling me to smile behind the camera because I guess I'm not smiling enough. Hey, is that better? Yeah. So uh, before that, there were two different cocktail shakers that were very prevalent at the time. There was the, uh, the Boston shaker, which is what we have right here. This is actually a mini grand and a grand shaker. The traditional Boston shaker would actually have a pint, a glass pint glass as one side of it. But you've basically got your grand shaker and then you've got a um, pint glass and, or, or uh, a mini grand shaker tin. And that's what's called a Boston shaker. That was the cocktail shaker that became very prevalent in America in the middle of the eight, in the middle of the 19th century. Um, but at that same time in Europe, the most prevalent cocktail shaker was the Parisian cocktail shaker, which is what we have here. So the Parisian cocktail shaker, obviously you can see that it kind of shares design with the cobbler shaker, um, but it is also just a two piece shaker, right? Uh, you know, this is your mini grand tin and this is your grand tin, right? And it's just a little bit more sleek design I think it's very beautiful looking. Some people have other ideas about it. I don't know, Marius said, I don't see what's so special about it, but I think it's really nice looking. And no, it was just- a It's just like a very, I think this is very refined looking compared to this. Right. Okay. Now, fast forward to 1884, we've got this guy named Edward Hawk who decides, I want to improve on the shaker. I think what I'm gonna do is take the design of the Parisian shaker and I'm gonna improve on it and, and Apparently he did lots of things like adding vents to shakers and went through all these different, you know, sort of uh, failures uh, of ideas of how to improve a shaker until he finally came upon just adding a strainer to the top of a Parisian shaker. So he invented the cobbler shaker. The reason why he called it a cobbler shaker is because at that time, the most popular cocktail was the sherry cobbler. And so these would be being used to make a lot of sherry cobblers. And he basically just did exactly that. So you have this little hat. So you put the hat on, you shake it so it doesn't spill, and then you take it off and you just strain it. Just integrated right into the top. So what's kind of funny about this is that the Boston shaker over time has become the professional bartender's choice of shaker. I don't see anybody in the US really using cobbler shakers or Parisian shakers. This is what you see. You either see the Boston shaker with the glass top, or you see a Boston shaker with a grand and mini grand. But what's interesting about that is anytime you see cocktail stuff at like Macy's or Nordstrom's or whatever, those like designer labels or like designer people decide they're gonna do a cocktail set, they always do a cobbler shaker, which mm -hmm. is really interesting. And I think that the cobbler shaker design has somehow become synonymous with luxury in some way. So it stands to reason that when somebody decided that they were going to improve on, co on cocktail shaker tech, they were gonna improve on the cobbler shaker. So exit these and enter the Elevated Craft Cocktail Shaker. This was created by a guy named Adam Craft and he funded it on Indiegogo. He raised $2.5 million. Let me say that again. $2.5 million on Indiegogo, which is incredible. Even for really popular pieces of equipment, that go to crowdfunding, it's difficult to get that many backers. He had something like 30,000 backers and he's shipped out 50,000 elevated craft uh, cocktail shakers. So uh, let's open this up and get into it and then we'll talk about the different design aspects and why this is, um, I don't know, I kind of feel like I should bring this guy back and we should just see them side by side. Uh, you open it up, you get this nice paper around your shaker. Here's your shaker. It comes with this nice cocktail journal uh, and it's, it's got specs in it and everything. Mm -hmm. So you got some specs in there and then it also has blank pages, right? For you to uh, kind of journal about your cocktailing experience. Comes with a sticker uh -huh. Uh -huh. and it comes with an extra rubber gasket and let, in case your rubber gasket uh, goes kaput over time, which is really nice of them to include. 
Uh, so let's talk about the design aspects here that have been improved. They made the shape that kind of comes in right here to be a little bit more ergonomic and kind of fit in your hand. The two biggest design aspects of this are that these are threaded. So gone are the days of having to shake and hold your thumb on the top of this little nubbin because it threads on. So he's got a nice sort of strainer part right here. I mean, it just looks pretty. I don't know if this is that much different than that, like straining wise, but you know, it looks nice. It looks future-y or something. And then obviously this is also threaded. So what's nice about this is that you don't have to worry about when you're shaking egg white cocktails, if it expands, it's not gonna blow apart. And then on top of that, um, if the vacuum of the ice, so when you shake ice, it creates a vacuum inside. And I have a suspicion that the reason why a lot of these shakers, this little part's hard to get off at the end is because when you're shaking, it kind of creates a vacuum and it kind of constricts all the metal onto each other. Does that make sense? I don't know. I feel like a scientist is gonna be like, ah, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I mean- It constricts the metal, right? And the metal gets hard to pull off, right? Sucks the cap closer to the- Right, so it's hard. So then it's hard to get this is off and mm -hmm. it's hard to get this off. I don't know the science behind it. If you guys want to describe it to me, that's fine. Um, but I know that that's a fact because I have used these for cocktails before and that does happen. Mm -hmm. And that is probably, you know, in the story of Adam Kraft, he said he was a home bartender that got very irritated by some of the tech that he was using. I'm assuming he was probably using one of these. He got irritated at the tech. And so he decided to improve on it and create something new. The other kind of cool aspect to this is that it has a graduated jigger on the inside of the cap. And it goes ounce for ounce all the way up to six ounces. I don't know, can you see that if I like? Yeah. So my own complaint about this is that it doesn't have a half ounce measure in between the one ounce measures. And I think that that's fine if you're measuring everything in full ounces, but you'd still need to then sort of eye out a half an ounce. And if you wanna be more accurate than that, it would be nice to just have another little line machined into it. Um, it has the milliliters on the other side. So it's got mils and ounces, which is nice. So the other thing about this is that this is double wall insulated. So when you shake it, your hands don't get cold because it doesn't, it doesn't uh, condense on the outside of the tin. I think that that is maybe a little bit of a drawback for novice bartenders that kind of gauge the temperature or gauge their shake by the temperature of the tin. Um, for somebody that's making a lot of cocktails, that doesn't really matter. I still think that strainer wise, you're gonna have to double strain your cocktails if you don't want ice chips in your cocktails. That's just a... That's just a reality, but I, you're gonna have to do that with any shaker. And then uh, it keeps things cold. The double wall insulation keeps things cold or hot. I guess if you put hot things in, it would keep it hot, wouldn't it? Yeah, I don't know if you would shake a hot drink then, sure. No, but you would put it, but this could like literally double as a thermos. Mm -hmm. Like you could literally put hot soup in here and just like take it to work. Um, and uh, because it's, it's double wall insulated, it wouldn't get hot on the outside. Sure. Just, uh, don't, ah, just a thought. Yeah, just don't use, uh, don't eat, uh... I was gonna say chunky uh, soup, but I guess you could just unscrew it and pour. Well, you un if you have a chunky soup, you unscrew it and this pour. way. Yeah. And then if you have a non-chunky soup, you can just screw it out that way. Or, uh, you know, you can put your favorite drink in here. All right, we're gonna make a cocktail with this thing, right, Marius? Yep. Give it a nice shake. All right, so apparently when you strain your cocktail and you're pouring, you wanna do it so that it's more at an angle so that more air is going into the top. The thing is, is that all of this, you know what? All of this is being hampered by the ice that's in there. So and that's why you gotta do really that. straining really well. What's that? It's straining really well, I guess. Yeah, so the ice, so it's all the cocktail has to work its way around the ice. Now this happens less so with like, let's say a Boston shaker, but it happens. Um, cobbler shakers do this as well. But I don't know if it's like my own clunkiness, but it's just like hard for me. I'm just not used to this kind of whole deal. You know, it's fine. It's not a drawback to the piece of equipment. You know, it's still a nice piece of equipment. And also completely, it's completely warm after shaking. The Denizen Rum makes a fantastic daiquiri. And, uh, you know, the shaker did everything that it said it was gonna do. So it's a pretty successful piece of equipment. I don't know if it's just cause I'm an old man or I fear change 
or whatever. I, I don't know if I would necessarily see myself using this, um, but it is a nice piece of equipment. It is uh, 70 bucks, right? $69. Mm -hmm. And they have all sorts of different deals that you can do on their website. You can check it out on elevatedcraft.com. Any, any last little thoughts, Marius? What do you think? No, yeah, it's, I mean, it's nice. Yeah. It's, a, it's a nice piece of equipment. Yeah, it's a nice piece of equipment. It's probably gonna last you ages. Yes, it will. It's very, very well done. It's like obviously very high quality steel. Um, it's just very well done. It's cool. Yeah. I don't know, I don't like it. Futuristic barware. Uh, this guy decided to improve on the cobbler shaker and he did a pretty good job. Yeah, so if you're in a market for a cobbler shaker, I guess. So well, if you not? like the cobbler shaker and you like a little bit more of a kind of modern sleeker design, mm -hmm. the Elevated Craft cocktail shaker's for you. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. That's it. That's it. Uh, all right, guys. So I hope you guys like this episode. If you like this channel, please hit like and subscribe. Check us out on Patreon, YouTube memberships, and uh, check out theeducatedbarfly.com for merch, articles, and our virtual bottle program. And I will see you guys later.